Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 25th, 2020. So yesterday we had a wonderful, wonderful relief rally. And last night during the middle of the night, we heard that Congress got its act together and finally agreed on a stimulus bill. So what does that mean for today? How about we grab ourselves something to drink, settle into our chair, and let's get ready for the morning market prep video. So this morning, we have a real interesting situation forming up here in the market. Um, oh, during the night, we had um, Congress finally come to an agreement. The president says that he's ready to sign it, hurry up and get it passed. And the market rallied 500 points on that news. Unfortunately, we have had an incredibly volatile um, pre-market session here where futures have been positive, they've been negative, and right now we're looking at the Dow at this very moment gapping down about 100 points. So will that $2.5 trillion of spending actually provide some support to the market? Boy, it's really difficult to know. Um, it, you know, when we take a look at all of the all of the things that are included, it's certainly things that are needed. We, uh, it's direct payments to U.S. citizens. That's going to help all those folks that have been laid off and not working and um, under financial stress. It's sending... Um, tons and tons, piles of money out to affected companies that are in um, a terrible uh, situation right now and um, needing some help and some bailout. We also have a massive amount of funds being directed toward the health uh, sector, which is, of course, very much needed um, in this crisis. But the question I have to ask is, will that translate into money flowing into the market? And I'm not sure that it will. When we start hearing um, um, case numbers continuing to decrease in New York City and the New York mayor coming out and saying every three days um, their numbers double, they're, and they continue to escalate there in New York City. Um, I'm not sure we can buy our way out of this situation. The, the normal stimulus packages that would, would get the market really going that the FOMC has already put out, the trillions of dollars that they have already spent, normally gives the market all kinds of levity and, and just rallies like crazy. Had no effect. Now my question is, will this two and a half trillion actually help this? And I don't know that it will. I don't know that we're gonna be able to buy our way out of this crisis as it continues to expand. Now, the other thing that's gonna be really, really important is the unemployment numbers. And although that we, we did get a nice rally, and I really, I held long trades overnight, hoping that we would get this bill passed and we would actually see a follow through rally today. But I may get my hand slapped for being a little bit too greedy and trying to hold on just one more day. As you can see, if we look in the chart, we just haven't had the ability to follow through even a single day after a substantial rally. And uh, maybe two and a half trillion dollars isn't going to be enough to help us do that. And Keep in mind that tomorrow, Thursday, we are going to get jobs data. Now, jobs data, the consensus estimate, is that we're going to see a massive increase um, in unemployment. Um, the consensus estimate is somewhere around, up over 700,000. There are a lot of folks out there suggesting it could be substantially higher than that. And that's going to be quite a shock to the system. And I'm not sure um, all of this stimulus spending is going to overcome that. And even with all this stimulus spending, is that actually going to bring folks back to the market and have them buying in the market as we continue to stay locked down and um, um, 
markets around the world just continues to see all of this massive impact um, coming into the marketplace. I don't know, and 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 I'm not trying to say that it will help or won't help. I just don't know, and I think that's what the market is trying to grapple with. Will we actually see all of this all of this money come into the market? Will it actually stabilize? And I'm not sure. I'm not sure um, anyone can predict that. We're in a different situation, and although there's a lot of folks that they like to trot out on TV and they pump out their chest and they talk like, "Oh, this is going to be the biggest wealth opportunity ever seen in the world," and while I agree there could be great opportunity when this is over, we are far from over in this situation. So be really, really careful in this market, guys. The volatility and the price action this morning is substantial. Um, in just the few minutes I've been talking here, we're now down 200 points in the Dow futures, the whip that we're seeing um, in this market. It's hard to know where this is actually going to be by the time we reach the open today. So let's take a look at some of the technicals here in the chart. If we take a look at the diamonds um, um, using a few moving averages, what we do know is we do know the 50 has crossed down through the 200. A lot of people claim that as the death cross. Um, we're in a different paradigm um, right now. There's never been a sell-off quite like this in the market. And the fear that is going around and the and the company destruction that's going around is pretty hard to put your finger on. Um, although we did rally, and what a beautiful rally it was yesterday, let's keep in mind that if we pull this chart back, we've got significant resistance levels in this chart to deal with. So we rallied up into this area yesterday we kind of stopped hit resistance if we can push through and continue to rally notice there's lots of resistance and a real strong resistance level right in here if we can make it up to around 218 that would be a wonderful move if we could get up there but I certainly um, wouldn't suggest uh, we're gonna race right up to there um, note that in any of these big rallies that we've had um, in the days before, um, we have been unable to follow through. And I have to imagine that if we do see bears coming in, if we do see selling coming in this morning, um, we will get some follow through panic selling and uh, could push us down substantially. We've had big swings and it would be um, reasonable to think that if the selling increases, a lot of folks will be bailing, closing out trades that they purchased yesterday, hoping to catch that rally. If we do follow through, if we can get that little bit of levity and push up here, we might get a nice, a, a nice little move to the upside, a little br breath of relief relaxation um, and that would be wonderful to see but with those pending home sales or not pending home sales with those pending jobs numbers coming out on Thursday I'm not sure we could count on that to hold anything much longer than through some kind of a morning pop here we'll have to wait and see if if we can get the futures back to positive and I certainly um, certainly is not looking good at the moment Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY also rallied back nicely yesterday, and we did recover the 2018 lows here um, in the SPY uh, by the end of the day. It had a nice little rally here toward the end of the day. Now, the question is, as we start reaching up here and we start hitting these next levels of resistance, can we push on through? Will this $2.5 trillion actually translate into more upside in the market and more stability? Um, um, that's something we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, a lot of destruction, a lot of technical damage has been done here, and it's going to take some time to soothe the nerves of a very nervous, uh, nervous uh, group of traders. Um, out here so it's just going to take a while um let's take a look at the cues now the cues i think had the probably the best opportunity to really recover nicely and they did have a really nice day rallied right back to its 500 day moving average um, ended up holding it as resistance and as you can see this morning we're looking to open just slightly lower 
here based on um, these moves and what's happening in the futures. If we could pop above there, if we can get above that level and actually break through, notice we have quite a lot, lot of price congestion over in here that the market's going to have to deal with. So if we can pop up in here, we'll have to pay attention to these areas pretty closely because of all of that price congestion that we're going to have to break through as resistance. And um, still, just tremendous technical damage here in the chart. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM did a really good job of holding these lows. Whether we can actually get a follow through, we pushed up into this resistance and we have a mess of price congestion right in here to deal with. So it'll be interesting to see, can we actually push up through there? I'd like to think we could. I'd like to think we could get just one day of follow through, one day of levity, but we'll have to wait and see. That may not be the case. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX, gave me some real concerns yesterday. The market was rallying. We were up the biggest one day move since 1933. Biggest one day move in the market. And yet the VIX after gapping down in the morning continued to rise. That gave me a little bit of pause. Um, not so much that I closed out my long trains. I decided to try and hold them through um, one more day. But I got to tell you, that was not something that I like to see. I don't want to see the VIX rising with the market. So a bit concerning here, and that may have been a bit of a forewarning of trouble uh, still ahead, that that volatility is still going to stay there and that the fear is going to remain even though we are dumping trillions of dollars into the market trying to uh, save things. We also saw gold. Um, racing higher yesterday. Now, part of this could still be fear, but another piece of this and a big piece of this is going to be that we're flooding the market with capital and um, reducing the value of the US dollar. So when the US dollar collapses, commodity prices tend to move up. So we saw move ups yesterday in GLD, oil, uh, various commodity prices, but it's more of a function of the devaluation of the dollar likely lifting those than it actually is um, buyers coming in to, to snap up those positions uh, trying to pick up. Now, gold could actually be picked up as a function of an inflationary guard. Um, when we flood the market with this kind of money, there is that possibility um, in the future that we see significant um, inflation and we could see some buying going on um, it, as that inflation hedge um, in gold, silver, things like that. So something to watch. But it's disconcerting to find the VIX rallying with the market and probably points to the fact that there's still a lot of uncertainty here in the market and um, we could see a lot of tossing about. So be really careful. Don't overcommit um, on anything, long or short, because the whip in this market could punish you pretty darn quickly. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar's got a few things here that we want to pay attention to. We've got durable goods orders this morning. Um, we're probably going to see these uh, economic data points start to show stress um, um, as this market continues to uh, deal with the impacts of the coronavirus. So we'll want to watch that one this morning. That could have a substantial impact. We could see um, big changes in some of these numbers. The What I'm worried about more than anything is this right over here. Um, and it's the real people. We're going to see probably a, a substantial hit in our GDP. I think everyone expects that tomorrow. Um, international trading goods. Um, I don't know where that might come in. It could see, uh, you know, a substantial change. But right here, um, this is where the real people are. Um, and when we start seeing those employment numbers really move higher and we know those folks are under pressure and stress here in the market, it's going to make it very, very difficult for us to see a clear path forward 
to just rebound right back. So I'm concerned about that one tomorrow and um, it may be difficult for the market to rally facing data points like that um, coming forward. So one of the things I have to tell you guys that uh, my plan is on these positions I will likely, if I can get any kind of a lift today, I will be closing them, at least almost all of them, um, completely out. And what I say, what I'm saying is, I may hold on to a little bit of a little piece, uh, just to you know, kind of keep an eye on them. But um, the high probability is I will just be closing them and closing them because of these numbers coming out um, on Thursday. And I don't want to be holding positions into the uncertainty of the weekend with these coronavirus numbers continuing to grow exponentially here in the country. So um, the uncertainty forward doesn't look good. And so I would probably be closer to cash than anything heading into the weekend. Um, so so while I'm making some money here today, um, and, and I feel um, very blessed that I was able to get in and, and get some money out of this, it is um, a, a tough call whether or not you want to hang on to anything in the volatility that we're seeing here in the market. So let's take a look. Um, on the earnings calendar today, we have... Um, uh, you know, quite a few companies reporting earnings, but I really couldn't come up with anything that was particularly notable except for um, maybe PAYX reporting today. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on this. Looks like it's um, opening about where it closed um, um, yesterday. But we also have to recognize the fact that we're not really paying attention to earnings anyway. Um, overall, in these companies, um, what we're more fo focused on is the stimulus packages. We're focused on how the market is going to react to them. We're focused on the the coronavirus numbers as they continue to grow, and so I'm not sure we can we can expect uh, you know. Uh, you know any market-based moves on earnings reports um, in in the days forward so while we want to be paying attention to them and particularly if you own them um, you want to be paying attention to them I don't expect um, uh, a good report out of PAYX to lift the market um, so let's take a look at a few things that I think are important um, a few things that could be setting up um, you'll have to decide how you want to trade some of this and be very very careful if you do but let's um, before we do that if you guys could do me a favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click those thumbs up buttons um, that helps me an awful lot if you found this video to be useful to be helpful if it helped you with some ideas on how you might want to approach the market for today that's the purpose of this video and um, i want to say thank you to everyone who does take the time to leave those comments you guys are awesome i truly truly appreciate it so with that being said let's take a look at a few things that could be um, on the mend but we've got to go to short-term charts to do that um, um one of those might be the financials um Trillions and trillions of dollars are being spent by the FOMC trying to support the banks and support the financials. And yesterday we started to see a little bit of levity coming into these um, these charts. If we take a look, this is what I want to do. If we take a look at some of these charts on an hourly, and by the way, this grade in area is aftermarket activity, pre-market activity. Um, what we're starting to see is we're starting to see a break of hourly downtrends. So we've got some of these financials breaking above their hourly downtrends. Now the question is going to be, can they hold those downtrends as support? We have a pattern that we trade an awful lot here in hit and run candlesticks and right way options. It was actually um, given a name by my partner, Rick Sadler. It's called a round of bottom breakout. And the round of bottom breakout works on every time frame. And as you can see, we have uh, Goldman Sachs here breaking above its 50-day moving average. And notice that 50-day is starting to flatten out. If the price in here can actually hold above that 50-day, we may, may find 
that support that actually pushes us up toward that 200 day on the hourly. So watch that closely. I'm seeing that across a lot of the financial um, stocks right now, BAC. Um, Yeah, type this morning. BAC um, rounding out that hourly uh, pattern in here. Citibank rounding out that hourly pattern. JP Morgan rounding out that hourly pattern. And if you go to the actual financial ETF, XLF, starting to round out that pattern here on the hourly. So a little bit of hope showing up in some of those stocks. If we look at some of the techs out there, tech stocks like Microsoft, Microsoft doing the same thing, breaking that hourly downtrend, starting to show that little bit of life or levity here in the chart. Pop through and now pulling back to test some price support in these charts. Could we start seeing these come up? Yes, we could, if we can prove to hold support. That is going to be critical over the, over the rest of this week. Now that we've had this little lift, can we actually hold? We've had this lift before where we've lifted up. As you can see, we get these big spiking lifts in the chart, but then we're unable to hold them as support. It's gonna be critical here that we start picking up some support levels and actually holding them. Whether or not we can do that, I don't know. But seeing that in a lot of tech stocks, um, trying to hang in there and hold up on some support levels. So keep a close eye on those. Everyone, it's gonna be a very challenging um, rest of the week, I think, with these, these economic data points coming out. I wanna caution everyone to be very, very careful. And remember, when the market is extremely challenging like this, the volatility is extremely high. Options are very dangerous. The trades that I put on were all stock positions so that I could actually avoid the high implied volatility, the wide bid ass spreads. Um, Right now, stock positions act an awful lot like options because we move so radically one way or the other um, in this price action. Guys, be very, very careful. And remember, there's no, there's no badge of honor in the market for being brave and risking your capital when you probably shouldn't be doing that. So consider your risk tolerance and decide whether or not you even wanna be involved in this. And it's okay. It is okay to just say, look, I'm gonna protect my capital. I'm gonna wait until the market starts to settle down. And honestly, for the most part, that's the best course of action. And I've already told you after today, I'm out. I'm going to be back in cash waiting for better days for the market to um, for the market to um, settle in. So that's what I'm looking for. Take that for what you want. Hopefully you find that helpful. I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you um, a, a great day. And I know it's very, very stressful in this market, but go find something productive. Be productive in your day. Keep your chin up. Remember, we're all in this, this together, everyone. As bad as this is, if we work together, if we help each other, if we support each other as a country, as a community, as a nation, we will be better for it. So hold your head up. Try to stay positive, And um, we'll see you right back here, bright and early Thursday morning. Have a good one, everyone.